Hello, my name is Andrew Barry Innocent, and I will be your host for this program. March 8th is celebrated as International Women's Day. And in celebrating this day, the International Men's Network, in collaboration with NTN and the Gender Relations Department, have sought to create this program titled Celebrating Women and Their Contributions. On today's program, we have, we'll be looking at a mother and a wife. Now, the thing about a mother is one of the first people that most babies see when they're born, as they're born, is the mother. So a mother plays a very important role in a child's life. And as a woman, there's, women tend to, at some point in their life, most of them tend to be a mother of, of some kind. So celebrating the womanhood in terms of motherhood is a very interesting person on our program today, Miss Janelle Mark. Welcome, Miss Janelle Mark, to the program. Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Now, what, as a mother, Miss, Miss Mark, as a mother, what is one of the things you enjoy most about being a mother? What is the most enjoyable part about being a mother to you as a woman? Well, one of the most enjoyable parts about being a mom is um, when you're having a bad day, when you're having a bad day and you're, you go home to your children, the children uplift you, you know, they make you feel better, especially if you're, if you're really down. You know, you get that joy from your children. You know, they make you laugh and you're, you just feel, you know, a comfort in your children. Wow. That's interesting, you know. I, I think I, I share that same sentiment as a father also. And um, one of the things I, I, I enjoy is which when I do get home and, and the way my daughter is excited to see me, it does make you kind of forget about how bad the day was, if it was a bad day at all, you know. And that, that is a true, that is a yes. true statement, in, in, in fact. Yes. I understand you have both a boy and a girl. Now, yes, um, I do. Yes. You do? Oh, wonderful. Now, I heard that, um, I heard a young boy talking to his father once, and he said to his dad, he said, Daddy, I know mommy better than you, you know. And his father said, no, 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 no. You know, me and mommy have been married for almost 10 years. We just came out about five years ago. How could you know your mommy better than me? And the boy said, listen, daddy, I spent nine months with mommy. Everywhere she go, I was there. Every move she made, I was there. When you knew mommy for the nine years, uh, there were days you'd go to work, there were days you'd go out, but mommy, Mommy and I stayed together for nine years, and I, I just kind of laughed because I thought it was very interesting that a young boy would look at this perspective on motherhood, that he would, he would say it's, it's, his relationship with his mom is, 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 so, is so tight or so close that he, he, he alerted it to the fact that he was nine months in his mother's womb. Yes. So let me tell you, um, you have a boy and a girl. What was it like raising a boy uh, as compared to raising a girl? Is there, is there any major differences? What was it like for, for you? Well, as a mother raising a boy, you would need to learn a lot about men and you know what to expect of them in the future okay. and what to expect of your son physically and as he, as he grows, you know, as a young man. So, you know, I would, I would constantly be reading up on the internet about how to raise a boy and um, that's interesting. What I, what I observed is that boys are really, really active and sometimes it's a little difficult to keep a boy in one place, okay. especially when they're very young. But um, with the girls, the girls tend to be more calm okay. in most cases, but the girls can be a bit loud and noisy. So they both have their challenges, you know? Right. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. And as a mom, I guess the, the whole aspect of nutrition for your children. As a mother, what, what do you have to say about the nutrition of your children and how do you manage that aspect of their life in terms of proper nutrition? Well, this is one of the most difficult parts of raising children because children tend to love sweets and KFC and, you know, fries and chicken and stuff like that. So, 
you need to try and, um, as a mother, try and find ways, more like trying and trick them into eating what they don't like. For instance, you would tell them what would happen to them in their own way, you know, mm -hmm. what would happen if you don't eat yes, yes, yes. vegetables and fruits and drink you know, enough water as a child. And you could also, as a mother, you could as well tell them, well, if you eat your vegetables, I'll, I'll give you a candy or I'll give you, you know, something that they really like. Interesting. We're going to go out for ice cream. So to motivate them to yeah, eat. And this, this mo motivates them. For mm. me, it, it really does. Wonderful. Yes. I remember I had a, a little boy that I was, I was caring for for a little while. Um, and um, his mom left the lunch for him. And he would not eat the food. So when he came to my office and his mom left him with me, I told him, you know what? I said to him, let's see who can eat, our f eat all our food the fastest. <laughs> so I said, let's make a race. Let's see who can eat food fastest. And he, he took on the challenge. And for him, that motivated him. So by the time I could start eating, which halfway my, my lunch, he had already finished one. He said to me, I won, I won. So you, I, I think it's an interesting concept you mentioned that it is good to find a way to motivate the children to eat and eat the yes. right things. Yes. Yes, you must. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you used um, um, a sort of a prize or a sort of a reward to encourage them to eat the right things. I think that's very interesting. Yes. I, know, I know also that you, as a mom, you must be thinking about your child's future. What would you like to say to the other moms out there in terms of planning your child's life? What, what, what would you speak, how would you speak to that issue, planning your child's well, life? Well, in terms of planning a child's life, the first thing that a mother needs to do is to plan her life. Okay. You know, you, you can't just have children without a plan. You need to... Interesting. You know, sort out your life, you know, educate yourself or get skills, you know, then find a, a job where you could provide for your children because it's really hurtful if a mother has children and, you know, mm -hmm. she's unable to provide for them. Interesting. Because and in order for a child to get edu educated, mm -hmm. you must have funds, you must have, you know, a salary coming in That's true. on That's a monthly true. basis That's true. in order That's to true. provide for your children. That's true. That's true, because I've heard some mothers talk about, um, even parents talk about um, putting some money aside, like um, even if it's, you like, you know you're pregnant or you're planning to have a child, like sometimes they, they put aside, say, $50 a month, and it just builds up, builds up, so they, by the time the child comes to, uh, ready, ready for school, they have some level of savings. I would some, some go to the, they have various plans and various financial institutions where they, um, they have a part of the salary going to a plan, but the plan is basically a financial plan that, uh, you know, it grows over the years. So by the time the child is ready to go to university or secondary school, that there's something growing without, a, without having a big bite in your pocket, you know? Yes. So I think that's very interesting what you said about the yes, planning. Yes, that's, that's one way of yeah, that's, that's very sorting out your child's future. Yeah, that's yes. very, very good, very good. Yes. So um, also, um, in this day and age, where there tend to be so much, you know, um, illicit behavior in some places, you know, you know, a mother, I guess, would have to think about the protection of a child. You know, you, you know, where would I leave my child? Who I leave my child with? You know, how safe is it to leave my child with such and such a person or such or such, such other person? Um, what can you tell us about child safety? How, you know, in terms of protecting your child from p pedophiles and that type of um, activity. Okay, so one way you could protect your child from pedophiles is number one, do not ever leave your child in the care of someone that you don't know mm. fully. Okay. You know, you need to have a relationship with the person. You need to know, you know, how the person lives their life, what they're doing, you know. You could also ask people who, you know, know about the person. What do you know about such and such a person? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then based on what they say, then you can decide whether it is safe to leave your child in that yes. person's care. Because if a child is hurt by a pedophile, this would scar their, their life. That's true. You know, That's very true. No matter what. 
we have to protect our children. Yeah. That is so very true what you said. I mean, we've all heard the ugly stories out there where um, this has happened to some people and to some children. So um, it's a, a really a virtuous thought, you know, and we have to bear that in mind. Yes. And, and, and you have to know the signs that when, if, if you left your child somewhere, you have to know the, the signs of when a child is going through something like that, you know. You know, the signs, sometimes, so I've heard some psychologists talk about the change in behaviors. You know, the child uh, might, whenever the child sees that person, the child might be scared or afraid or, you know. So um, these are some of the things yeah. I've heard some psychologists say that, you know, when you see those signs, that yes. you ought to be careful. Yes, there are signs, yeah. Yes, you ought to be careful. Very interesting thoughts, Miss Mark. Uh, another very important thing, I think, for most parents is, you know, how do I raise my child the right, the right way? You know, how do I make sure, uh, what can I do as a mother, you know, to raise my child in a way that you know, they grow up to be an uh, uh, upstanding citizen of the country, away from crime, away from bad things? Do you have any thoughts on that you'd like to share with us? Yes, I do. The number one way in training your child into following the right path in life is to know God, to know Jesus Christ, and to allow him to guide, guide your life, you know. Pray to, pray to God, pray to Christ, that, um, and he would give you that guidance as to where you should go, because in life sometimes, we make decisions and this is not what God really wants for us. And mm -hmm. walking down the right path can eventually cause you to be depressed because nothing would be more hurtful to you to look mm -hmm. back at your life and say, you know what, I regret that I did not do such and such a thing. If I had done that, my life would have been a lot better. Okay. So the number one thing is to allow your child to go to church, you know, and get to know God and um, develop that relationship with God. The oh. second thing you need to do is to have a relationship with your child. Always speak to your child and explain to them, you know, give them, enlighten them as to what life is about and mm -hmm. why they should not make mistakes like taking drugs or getting hooked on alcohol mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and many other things, you know. All right. Interesting. Yes. And, um, solid, some solid food for thought. And the other thing is you could have a relationship with your child where you sit down with them, you read with them, mm -hmm. you know, you laugh with them, ask them questions, you know, how was your day? What did you do for the day? You know, how was school? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mapp. I must say that, you know, you have said some very profound things and some very, um, um, th stuff that is very realistic and, and, and virtuous and, and applicable to our everyday life as, 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 as parents, you know, and in particular for mothers. I want to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, Ms. Mark. Now today, apart from just discussing um, motherhood um, with Ms. Mark, one of the things we want to do in today's program, since we're celebrating women, we want to look at um, the, the exhibit or the showcasing of talent. Now, Ms. Mark is talented in the area of singing viewers. She's a powerful singer. So we want to invite Ms. Mark to, at this point, to um, showcase a talent of singing to you. So stay tuned. There's a hero If you look inside your heart You don't have to be afraid Of what you are There's an answer If you reach into your soul And the sorrow that you know Will melt away and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel that hope is gone 
Look inside you and be strong, and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you. It's a long road when you face the world alone. No one reaches out a hand for you to hold. You can find love if you search within yourself and the emptiness you felt will disappear. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you cast your fears aside And you know you can survive So when you feel like hope is gone Look inside you and be strong And you'll finally see the truth That a hero lies in you Oh, Lord knows Dreams are hard to follow, but don't let anyone tear them away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on, there will be tomorrow. In time, you'll find the way. Yeah. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive and when you feel that hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you finally see the truth that a hero lies in you that a hero lies in you. Now, wasn't that a performance? Didn't she sing like a canary? <laughs> oh, viewers, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed Miss, Miss Mark's um, talent showcase. It was wonderful. Now, folks, we, uh, so we looked at a mother. The other woman we're going to look at is a wife. And we speak to no other than Miss Melissa Cherubin, um, who is a wife and also an accountant. Welcome, Miss Cherubin, Mrs. Cherubin, I should say. Welcome to the program as we discuss and celebrate women and International Women's Day. Thank you so much for agreeing to come. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Tell us, um, for starters, what do you enjoy most about being a wife? Oh, well... To be honest, um, I, as an individual and who is also a Christian, okay. I believe in God's word and I believe when he said that no man should be alone. Mm -hmm. And um, I, there, I don't think there is anything I don't enjoy mm -hmm. being a wife. Mm -hmm. um, it, yes, it do has its ups and downs, its challenges, mm -hmm. but that's one of the good things about it okay. because um, there's, God will not give us anything that he knows that we cannot handle. That's true. That's so true. I would say I enjoy everything about being a wife. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, the, on, the, on the note or the point you mentioned about um, not being alone, mm -hmm. you know, a man not being alone, that is, that is a critical issue because, yeah. you know, um, being alone is something that affects a lot of people mm -hmm. and um, even in, in, in correctional facilities um, some criminals they actually isolate them as a form of punishment yeah. mm -hmm. and isolation is, a, is something or being alone is something that can be very detrimental to yeah. one's psyche and one emotional you know makeup so I could understand that you know that a, a woman you know being with a man in a house as a wife you know that companionship is very yes, critical yes yes you know, i guess when he comes home he has somebody that he can at least yeah. talk about his day if he mm -hmm. wants to yes. and you yourself can have someone yes. to talk to it goes both ways yes, yes. i know how yes. important it is for ladies to to um to, to be able to um express themselves mm -hmm. and talk about things so it's a it's a two-way thing i guess yes you know, it both. is yes it yes, is. yes yeah and you said um there's not there's no major difficulty you know 
that you want to talk about? It's, it's, <laughs> it's most times it's good. Well, 99% of the time I do enjoy it. Right. Um, that 1%, I try not to let that 1% overpower the 99 percent okay, okay, of okay. my enjoyment of being married because okay. like i said um marriage has its ups and downs that's and true, that is true. the one percent so we have that's to true. we as individuals human beings wives should not allow that one percent to overpower and ruin our marriage that's true. which god blessed us with that's true yeah i read one um one marriage counselor said she used the, the, the methodology or the principle of 80-20. Mm. She says, look at the 80% the that's good and sometimes mm -hmm. you have to um, either work on or ignore the 20% that's bad. But basically what she's saying is there's normally a lot more good mm -hmm. about being a yeah. wife than there is, there is bad. Yeah. You know? So I, I appreciate that point. But can I ask you, um, on the good side of the marriage thing, mm -hmm. um, what is the part you enjoy the most? You, you, what would be the, the part of the marriage that you enjoy the most? <laughs> if I can ask that, that is, that's okay to ask. My husband is a... He can be a very serious individual, okay. but he's also a very funny person. <laughs> and let me tell you, once if, when you see no one is home, if I'm home by myself, the yes. place will be quiet. Once he's home by himself, the place will be quiet. Okay. But once the two of us are there, <laughs> there is noise in the area. I always that's tell good, him that the, our neighbors would always know when both of us are home. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he makes me laugh. And that's well, one that's of the things good. I really love about him. Right. That he is a funny person as well. That's, that's yeah, a, and that's he makes wonderful. me laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. And that's very important. Yeah. I mean, after sometimes in life, when you come from after a day, of meeting all kinds yes. of people. Mm -hmm. some, of them, some of them haters, mm -hmm. some of them backstabbers, yes. some of them betrayers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you meet some good people, too, but some of them meet some bad ones. But mm -hmm. to come home yeah. to a companion that can make yes. you laugh, I think that's a wonderful yes. thing to have. And Very I want to think about it to encourage um, viewers. You know, it's a wonderful thing for you to come home to uh, a wife or a husband that can make his wife or her husband laugh. I think that's critical. Mm -hmm. You know, in life, I think that's a critical thing. Yeah. Um, also, um, what, what, what are some of the lessons you've learned um, through your marriage? Is there anything, any lesson you can look back and say, hmm, you, know, um, you know, if I had to do it over again, uh, you know, I would, I would either focus more on this one or I, or I do this or I do less of that. Anything you would, you, when you look back over the years, anything you'd want to um, do again or anything you would rather stay away from? Um. I don't think there is anything that I would change okay, because everything happens for a reason, a purpose and a plan that God has designed okay. for. Yes. And if I didn't go through the ups and downs, I would not be who I am today. Okay. And I would not be um, the, the understanding person that I am, yeah, that's important um, the patience that mm -hmm. I have, because mm -hmm. um, when, you, when you're by yourself, that's one thing, but then when you start to live with someone else, that is a totally yes, different thing, yes. that there's um, a new set of changes that you have that's to true. do and so forth. Yes. And I don't regret any of it. Okay. So... Yeah, that's just basically it. I don't regret yes. because so, I've learned a lot. Yeah, wonderful. And I'm still learning. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're saying that when you do, when, you, when, you, when someone marries, um, it's the, the, the whole environment changes as a single person to a married person because mm -hmm. now you're sharing your whole world. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's a, a completely different yeah. world. Mm -hmm. You share everything now. Yes. You, know, you share a bed, mm -hmm. you share food, mm -hmm. you even share the, the cost of things in the house. Yes. You share space, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of sharing going on, yeah. a lot of, um, I guess, giving and taking. Yes, yeah. that's so true. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of the things that you and your husband like doing? I mean, you said you, you like laughing, but um, what sort of things, when it comes to probably going out on dates, or what kind of um, things you'll do to, 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 to strengthen the marriage? Well, we basically spend time um, watching our favorite shows. Like, well, not really, I would say, I 
when he, I see him watching something that he likes, I go and join him and we, you know, interact. All that wow. helps to build up the marriage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not basically um, what only I like or mm -hmm. what only mm -hmm. he likes. Yes, yes. But it's what we both, we, we tend to lean on each other and enjoy each other's company and our likes and, you know, what we don't like, we put it on our side and yes. we come together I as like one. That. Yeah. Yeah. I truly like what you said. It's, it's truly pragmatic and it's truly applicable mm -hmm. because even in my life, surprisingly, my wife likes cricket more than me. <laughs> she loves cricket. She, I mean, she knows all the players' names. She knows all the different teams. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not a big lover of cricket. I watch it, but not as much as she watches mm -hmm. and not as much as she enjoys it. But what I do, according to you, is Sometimes a game, play, a game is playing and I just go and watch it because it's important to yeah. her to share mm -hmm. what she enjoys with me. Yes. So I'd go and see the phone and watch a game with her. Yeah. There are sometimes when it's really hot and West Indies is playing, I would go and watch it <laughs> <Yeah>. voluntarily. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes I just go and watch it because just to make her happy. Mm -hmm. you know, she just loves cricket. Yeah. And likewise herself, I mean, I like to hear a good preacher sometimes, mm -hmm. a good preaching like mm -hmm. T.D. Jakes. And sometimes she would just come and sit with me. Somebody would call and say, come on here, come here. Mm -hmm. And she would come and, you know, and I feel pleased to have her, you know, share that experience with me. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying, that yeah. it's good to be able to, um, um, you know, share, share even each other's enjoyments, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. when, you, when, you, when you're living with somebody, you want to share what you like with them. Yes, that's you know? so, so, so that's very practical what you say there. Yeah. What, what do you do? Um, I Mrs. am an Sheridan. assistant accountant. Okay. And I, I would, you can basically say I'm all over the place. I don't <laughs> like to stick one place. All right. Um, so I am more an assistant accountant but I tend to move in dif different departments. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And um, in light of COVID and what's happening uh, in terms of um, some people have to work more at home. Mm -hmm. um, as a wife, working more at home and having, you have kids, I understand also, Yes, right? I do. Um, how do you balance the working from home and having kids and having a husband at the same time? Is, is, that, is that going okay or would you like to say anything about that? Sometimes it's a bit difficult, but um, especially where, when you have to monitor a teenager mm -hmm. who's at um, secondary school and they're okay. doing online courses. But I think I, I, I literally, I actually hear um, some people saying that it's difficult and I do understand where they're coming from. But right now, um, I think we just need to set priorities and set a plan that would be able to work for us yes. and that's what i did and although um they say um you know social media technology has mm -hmm. has its bad ways to it but okay. i tend i find it works for me because oh. that's how i i help my son with his online schooling wonderful um wonderful. if i'm out on the road and he's having a issue or something so he needs to ask me he communicates wonderful. he calls me he says mommy i'm having this issue and i would deal with it so the phone the social media it's mm. it, it's a good thing right now wonderful. yeah it helps a lot wonderful yeah. wonderful and um do you have any advice you'd like to give uh, a wife to be or a wife listening based on your experiences, based on your, your knowledge? Is there anything in particular you want to say to any wife listening to you right now? Well, um, my best advice that I can give a woman out there um, is just to be kind to yourself, be respectful to yourself, don't be hard on yourself. Um, and also love yourself first um, because if no if you don't love you who else will mm -hmm. so it's kind of like we we mirror our people individual other individuals mirror what they see okay so if we mirror um, negativity that's what we're gonna get back okay. uh, if we mirror positivity that's what we're gonna get back so mm. it's just basically don't be hard on yourself be true to yourself ladies be respectful to yourself and that is what you're gonna get back very powerful words there you know make sure you can love your own self ladies 
Uh, powerful words, powerful advice from Mrs. Cherubim. Thank you, my dear, for being there. Now, before you go, <laughs> we want you to showcase your talent. Because yeah. uh, you know, on this broadcast and this program, we're not just talking about the issues, but we want mm -hmm. to give, since we celebrate women, we want to celebrate women's talent. And I understand that you're a powerful singer also. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, let me tell you what's coming to you next. The next thing you'll hear is the sound of Mrs. Melissa Cherubin singing and showcasing her talent singing. Thank you. At last, my love has come along. My lonely days are over And life is like a song Ooh, yeah, yeah At last The skies above are blue My heart was wrapped up in clovers. The night I looked at you, I found a dream that I could speak to. A dream that I can call my own. I found a thrill to press my cheek to. A thrill that I have never known. Oh, yeah, you smile, you smile. Oh, and then a spell was cast And here we are in heaven For you are mine At last, at last Mm -hmm. Ooh. At last. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for viewing. I trust that you were blessed. Let's continue um, this path of the right way as you were encouraged by the, my two guests today and advised by them. Let us continue therein. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.